Hey, I don't know about you, but I aim to misbehave. <music> Greetings, fellow makers! Welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill, and today I'm going to show you how I made Captain Malcolm Reynolds' pistol from the show Firefly. This particular build is a celebration of our channel hitting 100,000 subscribers, which still completely blows my mind. This is a build that a lot of you guys have been asking for. It's something I really, really like, and it's something that I figured you guys could follow along with at home. There is a link down in the description to a free set of templates that I put together. Quick shout out to my pal Matt Munson over at the Project Workbench, whose channel you should definitely go subscribe to. He helped me out by providing a bunch of reference pictures that I use to put together this template. Now, if you're watching this video in December of 2016, then I have good news for you. If you do put together this particular gun, build your own at home, uh, I'm going to have a video to showcase all of those builds coming up here really soon. I'll have more information on how you can join in on that at the end of this video, so stick around after the build is done. If you're watching this video after then, you should still totally give the build a try, and if you do, send me a tweet with a picture of your finished gun. I'm at Chinbeard. Now, I decided to make this gun using some traditional model making techniques and materials. In particular, I used PVC foam plastic and styrene plastic and some wood and a bunch of normal power tools. Of course, your build could be any technique. In fact, we've showcased a whole bunch of different techniques on this channel. We'll have links to videos down below that can help you out. Things like EVA foam guns or MDF guns or any other kind of wood. You could 3D model and 3D print your gun like we've done in our Prop 3D series. Or you could use cardboard or foam core or warbler or any other technique. All right, enough chatter, let's get to my build. I started by sticking my main template piece to a half inch piece of PVC plastic. First, I laid down some masking tape, then I glued down the template paper to that masking tape with a glue stick. I think I saw Izzy Swan do this in one of his videos, so thanks for the tip, Izzy. This piece was rough cut out on the bandsaw. I didn't try to get it perfect, just as close as possible to the lines. I cut right into the trigger guard to hog out the material in the middle. This gap was then super glued back together. This rough cut piece was then cleaned up using my disc and belt sanders for any of the flat areas, and I used the oscillating spindle sander to clean up the interior curves and inside the trigger guard. Once I was happy with this part, I was able to peel off the masking tape, taking the paper template with it. The next layer of detail was also made from half inch PVC, but I needed mirrored pieces for either side, so I stuck the two pieces together with double sided tape and added the template. These parts were cut out on the bandsaw and then cleaned up on the disc sander. Using a sharp knife, I traced the detail lines into the sides of these parts through the template. I also poked in some spots where the screws would go later. These details were highlighted with a pen. The same was done on the mirrored piece and the two parts were pulled apart. Both of these parts got a nice gentle round over on the lower portion using a sanding drum in my rotary tool. When I was happy with the rough shape, I used needle files and sandpaper to bring them to their final form. The detail grooves were made by first cutting out a trench with a hobby knife, removing a thin strip of material. This groove was then widened and squared off with a thin, flat needle file. This was a little bit tricky for the rounded part, but I took my time and snuck up on it until I was happy with the outcome. Next, the rear edge where the grips would go were rounded over a little bit with a needle file. Happy with how things were shaping up, I sanded the flat surfaces of my parts and then glued the two side parts to the main central shape. These were adhered using super glue, which provided an incredibly fast and durable bond. Any of the large flat areas that needed cleaning up got some attention on the disc sander. There's a roundover on the top of the gun that I made by first drawing where the roundover would start and stop on the top and sides of the gun. Then I went hog wild on the belt sander, removing the bulk of the material. The rest of the shaping was done with a file and sandpaper. Using that handy needle file again, I connected the groove from the top of the gun to the side of the gun around the curve I just added. The same was done on a similar feature along the bottom of the gun. I really wanted the grips to be made from real wood, and I had some half inch poplar lying around, so I used that. Two pieces were taped together, and then a hole was drilled through both where the screw would eventually go. 
These were then cut out on the bandsaw and cleaned up on the sanding machines. Using double-sided tape, I temporarily attached the grips to the rest of the gun body. This allowed me to shape both the grips and the gun at the same time, making sure they would end up flush. This shaping was done slowly and carefully using a sanding drum in my rotary tool. This took a fair amount of time and kicked up a lot of dust. Hence, the dust mask. Once the bulk of the material was removed, I finished up shaping using my favorite files and, you guessed it, more sandpaper. The grips were then removed so that they could be finished separately. I drilled out and chamfered the holes for the screws. These screws were some cheap set screws that I got in bulk from Harbor Freight. I threaded them into the wood, but removed them for the staining. After sanding the grips smooth, I hit them with a couple layers of a very nice looking wood stain and I let them dry. The next layer of detail was done with a quarter inch PVC foam plastic. One of the parts has a hole through it, so I drilled it out before cutting out the rest of that part. These pieces were then cut out on the bandsaw and cleaned up on the sanding machines. The two mirrored side parts were cut out together and then separated before adding some bevels. These bevels were roughed out carefully with a hobby knife, and I mean carefully. This seemingly simple task is a great way to accidentally jab yourself with the pointy end. Once roughed out, the bevels were smoothed with a needle file. Happy with the finish, I glued the side detail parts onto the main gun body with more of my favorite super glue. The small loop part was also super glued onto the bottom of the handle. There are some rods along the side of the gun and I decided to make them from some acrylic rod that I had on hand. I roughed out the length and I cut it down on the bandsaw. Then it was chucked up in my drill press to use as a poor man's lathe and using files and sandpaper I rounded down the end of the rod and carved in a groove. This actually worked way better than I thought it would. Using the fence on my other bandsaw I very carefully split this rod down the middle. These half round rods were then super glued down to the gun body and the over length material was trimmed off with a saw. The next layer of details clocked in at about an eighth of an inch thick. I chose to use styrene plastic for this since it's more rigid than the PVC. These parts were cut out on the bandsaw and cleaned up on the sanding machines. They are the trigger, hammer, and the loopy part for the magazine. I cut off another hunk of that acrylic rod to use as the round bit on the hammer and super glued the two pieces together. Then this finished hammer part was glued down to the gun. There's your thumbnail, right there. Yeah, nailed it. The next layer of detail was about 1 16th of an inch thick. Again, I used styrene plastic for this. They were cut and sanded before gluing them down to the gun. Side detail parts were rounded a little bit using a heat gun and the flat of a knife. This took a couple of tries to get it right, but eventually I got something I could work with. The magazine release lever got an additional piece of eighth inch styrene glued to it and then I just kind of freehand sculpted it with the belt sander until I thought it looked right. This happy little detail was then super glued to the rest of the gun. The base of the barrel was made from a piece of half inch PVC foam and an eighth inch piece that were laminated together to get the appropriate thickness. Using the template I cut out the hexagon and sanded it down to shape. This was then glued down to the gun with more super glue. The length of the barrel was made from two pieces of half inch PVC plastic laminated together. After cutting it roughly square on the bandsaw, I tilted the bed to 45 degrees and added the fence so that I could cut long bevels along each corner. This worked out pretty well, but it took a couple of tries to get the bevels just right and I ended up doing a lot of cleanup work by hand with a piece of sandpaper on my workbench. To make sure this barrel was properly secured to the gun, I drilled out an eighth inch hole into the gun and into the barrel. This hole accommodated a length of eighth inch brass rod that I glued in place when I attached the barrel. Using a Forstner pin, I drilled out a hole in the end of the barrel, and finally I added the front sight, which was made from a couple of pieces of that eighth inch styrene plastic. There are some round details along the top of the gun that were a little bit tricky to add. I drilled out holes to accommodate these parts on the drill press, but drilling into a rounded surface was a little bit challenging. I first drilled out a small pilot hole, and then I drilled that out with a quarter inch bit. After cleaning these up by hand, I glued in a quarter inch thick acrylic rod and then cut it flush with the top of the gun. This was a little bit sloppy, so I filled in some of the gaps with some air drying spot putty. Once that dried, I sanded everything smooth. The long, thin detail along the top of the gun was made from an ultra-thin piece of styrene plastic. 
This was cut out with a knife and then glued down with super glue. I also decided that this was the best time to glue on the trigger. When I did that, I realized the trigger guard needed to be sculpted a bit more, so I removed the offending material with my rotary tool. This gun has some weird screws on the front for some reason, so I had some old computer case screws that were actually really close, although they were a tad bit long. So I chucked them up in my power drill and used that along with my belt sander to remove and bevel the knurled ends of the screws. To attach them, I drilled out holes in the gun. The clamp that you see is there to keep the acrylic rods from popping off from the force of the drilling. Once the holes were drilled, I super glued those screws right into place. The gun is also covered with hex screws, just like everything else in the future. So I drilled out holes for each of these screws and then just screwed them into place using an Allen wrench. These are more of those cheap Harbor Freight set screws. With all of the fabrication finished, I could get to work sanding everything down as smooth as possible with a 200 120 grit sandpaper. The entire gun was then spray painted with a couple of good coats of an automotive filler primer and allowed to dry. This filler primer will fill in any small scratches or unwanted textures. Then, using a 400 grit sandpaper, I sanded everything again. Any of the red spots that you see are problem areas that were filled in with that air drying spot putty before sanding. Finally, all of the sanding was done and I sprayed on a good layer of just normal rattle can primer to prepare for paint. The base color was a layer of bronze spray paint. Once that was dry, I did the bulk of the coloring by hand using good old fashioned gold acrylic paint and a paintbrush. Using a mostly dry brush, I added more and more gold paint to the edges of the gun trying to mimic the worn metal look on the original prop. I didn't try and add it all at once. Instead, I went over areas multiple times in light passes until I got the effect I was going for. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but this is definitely a finish I need to practice some more to get just right. Next, everything, including the wooden grips, was sealed with a glossy clear spray paint to protect the paint job. Once that was all dry, I scraped off the paint on the handle and super glued the wooden grips down to the gun permanently. The final touch was to do just a little bit of weathering. This was done with black and brown oil-based paints. These are water mixable oil-based paints. They're great for dirtying up things that are supposed to look mechanical like a space gun. Just know that they take forever to dry. This wasn't a complicated paint job. I just smeared on a bunch of paint in all of the crevices of the gun and I used a paper towel to wipe most of that away. This was repeated until the gun was thoroughly dirty. That final touch completed Malcolm Reynolds' pistol. Now, no power in the verse can stop me. I'll tell you what, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I think mine ended up just a little bit wider than the one in the show, so if I did it again, I might use slightly thinner stock material. Note that I made this entire prop from scraps I had lying around in the shop, so it effectively cost me nothing but my time. As always, all of the tools and materials that I used are listed below along with those free blueprints. Like I said before, I want you to try and build this gun and I want you to share it with me and be included in an upcoming video. Here's how to do that. Step one, build the gun yourself with any technique or material. Step two, make a really short video, 10 seconds long. If it's 11 seconds, it will not be included. 10 seconds long, put that video on the internet somewhere and you can send me a link to that. I'll have a form on my website That'll be linked below. That's where you can submit your video showcasing your finished project. In that video, of course, mention who you are. Mention what it is you made your Malcolm Reynolds gun out of. And say whatever else you want to say in that 10 seconds. The deadline for that is January 1st, 2017. That gives you from right now uh, just under a month to finish the project. Like I said, these will all be included in a video coming up in January, and I am really excited to see your completed build. And again, if you're too late to be included in that, you should still build it and send me a picture over on Twitter. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Hopefully you'll give it a try. And of course, thank you so much for helping us meet and surpass the 100,000 subscriber goal. If you have any questions about this build, let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to help you out. And of course, if you're new to the channel, you ought to go give that subscribe button a click. We do prop and costume making videos every single week over here on the channel, and we are climbing steadily closer to 200,000 subscribers, and we'll have to do a similar project once we get there. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to see your projects.